Um, Ian, if we could talk about carpal tunnel syndrome now, because yeah. um, I understand that's something that's pretty common in the pregnant population and, and in the postnatal as well a little bit. Much more so in pregnant yeah. population. Uh, with decurvones, you're looking almost exclusively at postnatal. Um, it's, the, it's the baby caring, which is the issue. Um, with carpal tunnel, it does sometimes carry on after the delivery, but but often there's a very um, definite cutoff point, you know, the, the baby's born and suddenly the symptoms are gone. Mm -hmm. um, it, it tends to, um, to come on fairly late in pregnancy and it can become very severe, you know, mm -hmm. it can be a really horrible condition to try and deal with in those last few weeks of pregnancy and hopefully um, once the baby's born it will resolve rapidly. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy and what's yeah. happening with carpal tunnel. No worries. The, the, the term carpal tunnel um, or carpal means wrist. Um, these bones in the uh, in the wrist joint, there are eight bones that make up your wrist joint and they're called the carpal bones. On the back of the wrist they're relatively flat, on the front of the wrist they've got these weird shapes, um, but they're kind of flat through the middle of the wrist and raised up on the little finger side and on the thumb side. And then there's a, a ligament that goes across the raised up bits. Um, forming like a like a strut which supports the bony arch and that is your carpal tunnel passing through that tunnel from your forearm down into your hand you've got nine different tendons two to each finger one to your thumb and then you've also got your median nerve which is one of the main nerves that supplies your hand carpal tunnel syndrome is just a description of uh, anything which is causing compression um, of the median nerve mm -hmm. as it passes through that space um, so that can be caused by all sorts of different things. Um, it can be caused by inflammation, can be caused by swelling, can be caused by repetitive overuse, can be caused by um, gripping of the muscles in your forearm, pulling the muscles from your hand down into the tunnel, um, can be caused by trauma, can be, um, and in the case of pregnancy, can be caused by the, um, the fluid retention or you know, um, mm -hmm. the, the changes that happen as a result of the hormones um, during pregnancy. Um, if you've got swollen, puffy feet and ankles, um, you've probably got swollen, puffy hands. <coughs> um, and yeah, so that, that fluid retention tends to sit around your hands and feet. Um, and so a little bit of extra fluid squashing its way into your carpal tunnel is going to squash everything in there. Tendons are tough, they don't mind being squashed, but nerves are very sensitive to compression and pressure. Once a nerve gets squashed, it, it doesn't like it, it's un it gets unhappy. Um, it, you get a, a neuritis, an a inflammatory reaction from the nerve, um, which tends to cause more inflammation and swelling in the tunnel, which squashes the nerve more. And so it can become a bit of a self-maintaining problem once it is first kicked off. And what are some of the common <coughs> signs that you, or symptoms that the patients yeah. will complain of? What will they tell you is the issue? Um, usually the uh, sensory issues, sensation issues are usually the first thing. Um, it might be a bit of tingling or numbness, mm -hmm. um, often the first thing, and it's typically going to affect the thumb, the index finger and the middle finger, sometimes the ring finger on the palm side. doesn't usually affect the back of the hand, um, doesn't usually affect the little finger, but I, I say usually because there's a huge variety of different mm -hmm. presentations for carpal tunnel, and some people do get whole hand, some people do feel on the back of the hand, some people feel in the wrist. But textbook definition, yeah. uh, or the most common presentation is palm side, thumb, index, middle finger. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be tingling and numbness. Um, <clears throat> it's often quite intermittent, um, particularly when it first starts. It might come on after you've been using your hand, doing some gripping. It might come on um, with certain positioning of the hand, um, particularly people who sleep a little bit scrunched <laughs> up at night, a bit of a fetal position, sustained wrist flexion like that, mm -hmm. or even sustained wrist extension. If you lie on your side with your hand resting on the mattress um, with a bit of sustained wrist extension like that, um, that can also cause a little bit of extra compression. Sure. Um, so there are various things which can increase it. Um, Pain-wise? Pain, yeah. Pain can become a real issue. Um, it, again, it's, it's usually going to be in the wrist itself or spreading down to that part of the, of the palm of the hand. Nighttime is often a real problem um, for people with carpal tunnel. That's true whether it's pregnancy related or not. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> the yeah, your, your body makes all sorts of changes to the way that it functions when you're asleep. Mm. One of those changes is that your blood vessels become a little bit more permeable, a bit leaky, if you like. And so, um, you know, the, the, the fluid, the plasma from in your blood leaks out a little bit into the tissue spaces. Um, that's why when you wake up in the morning, you feel like you need to kind of <laughs> get everything moving again. You know, you're, you're literally pumping that fluid back out sure. through your lymphatics. 
Um, that still happens when you're pregnant, so if you've got extra fluid in there at night time, plus possibly a little bit of postural stuff going on. You've got that finite <coughs> amount of space. Yeah, that that's right. Little nerve in there. So the nerve can just get really unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, so some, some people have horrible problems trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. You're probably a bit sleep deprived anyway because you're getting up to go to the toilet you know, how many times a night and you're uncomfortable. And so then add a bit of carpal tunnel in. It can, can make those last few weeks really, really difficult Absolutely. with sleep deprivation. Um, what sort of activities or movements are particularly um, irritable, do you find? The worst things tend to be um, sustained gripping, mm -hmm. um, it, particularly gripping with your fingertips close to your palm. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's that, that muscle pull I was talking about. The, mm -hmm. the lumbricals, little tiny muscles in your hand, get pulled by the long tendons into the carpal tunnel with close um, fingertip to palm gripping. So that's definitely... And no chin-ups, <coughs> ladies, in the last <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you've got the option, if you, if you have to grip something, grip it with a, a large hand grip. Keep your fingertips as far away from your palm as you can when mm -hmm. you're gripping. Um, but sustained gripping of any, of any sort um, can be an issue. Vibration um, mm. can be an issue, you know, whether it's holding the steering wheel or you know, you know, any other sort of vibrating tools. Dryer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, those things can be really irritating for the nerve. Um, and then those, those sustained wrist positions, um, all, all the way back, all the way forward, mm -hmm. um, tend to be a problem as well. So if you're holding a, you know, carrying a box like this um, mm -hmm. can be a real issue. If you can, try and get something which has got handles on it that you can hold. I know, just from teaching exercise classes that, that yeah. on all fours <coughs> position with the wrist and extension is yeah. um, very uncomfortable. Yeah, so in that situation, you might find it's a lot easier to have dumbbells to hang on to, mm -hmm. to take weight through, or a, a rolled oh, up towel yeah. um, yep. just under the heel of the hand. Those sort of things can just to take the pressure off the wrist. Yeah. Um, if someone suspects that they have uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, are there any kind of quick tests that they could do at home? So if yeah. you hold those <coughs> positions, the, I know there's all The, the classic <laughs> test, yeah, absolutely. The, the classic test for carpal tunnel is called Phelan's test, mm -hmm. um, which is simply a case of with a bit of pressure, holding your wrist in a position of sustained flexion. Yep. Um, and I mean, if you look at the uh, at the literature, the the test is officially two minutes. Oh wow! Um, which is an incredibly long time. If mm -hmm. I'm sitting here with a patient, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm not sure that it's strictly necessary to do it for two minutes. Yeah. Um, most people who have carpal tunnel syndrome, you know, you're generally going to see an, an increase in symptoms within an, you know, sometimes a few seconds, yeah. definitely within 30 seconds. If they're not getting any change within a minute, then you know, there's nothing too major going on. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, Tanel's sign you mentioned is uh, actually tapping, you know, just fingertip tap, tap, tap uh, directly over the nerve. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that causes a bit of an electrical zappy, um, painful response in the nerve, mm -hmm compared to the other nerve. It can be normal for some nerves to do that, so it's always worth comparing to um, the other side. If you've got symptoms tingling on one, check a normal one if you've got it. Mm. Um, yeah, that might be a sign that it's the, the nerve that's getting involved. So if someone comes to the clinic who is pregnant, yeah. um, who's having these symptoms, what are you gonna be assessing? Are you looking at, because I know, you know, the ones that we would <coughs> see in a musculoskeletal clinic that aren't pregnant, yep. we, we would check. You gotta look at the whole nerve pathway. <laughs> the whole Absolutely. nerve pathway. Do you do that with pregnant ladies as well? Um, Just a quick screen? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, any time you are dealing with a nerve, you've got to consider the whole nerve. Um, and in the case of treating someone who's pregnant with carpal tunnel, it, it's nice because you've got a bit of an end point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that the delivery date is likely to be a resolution point or, or getting close to it. Symptom management. So yeah, you just want to get yeah. them through. It, it, it's not like you're, you're considering surgery as an option the way you would if someone... Um, you know, it, it's, it's a case of how can we get you through? How can we help you to sleep better? How can we um, you know, make it so that this isn't affecting your quality of life so much? Um, so you know, treating the whole nerve pathway can actually make the whole nerve happier. Mm. Um, so if you can find some form of nerve gliding and sliding exercises or you know, do some, some gentle mobs um, at, for, the, for the neck or you know, so treating the nerve as a whole might actually improve the nerve health and happiness mm. and, uh, and give some symptom relief. Um, some, some people find that, you know, that carpal mm. mobilizations can be really soothing. I don't, to be honest, really understand why that helps, <laughs> yeah. um, but, it's, but it's, it, it's certainly worth trying because it can be really helpful. Um, again, ultrasound, I, I don't really see why that would be helpful. Maybe it's just the, the, the soothing massage and a bit of cooling gel, but, um, but some, you know, it's one of something which is worth trying because some people do get some genuine relief from it. Mm -hmm. uh, in severe cases where it's really difficult, um, particularly at night time, it's definitely worth trying some kind of splint at mm. night. Um, 
it's even worth experimenting uh, before you go to any expense just with some kind of makeshift splint. Um, so yeah, I remember just reading somewhere about yeah, just getting like a, a towel and sort of absolutely yeah. strapping it to yourself at night. Anything which is going to stop you from getting into yeah. a, an extreme position. But there you know, go, egg flip. <laughs> A crepe bandage or elastic yeah. bandage, just put that onto your hand. It's just going to keep you in a fairly neutral position at night time. Um, that's just a, a simple way of seeing whether it helps. So um, think about your first aid for, for fractures and yeah. get creative. Magazine. That's right. Yeah, a bit of a you know, Wheaties packet or something. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah, so if that helps, then they're more likely to respond. Yes, to that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And would you go, um, presumably like with decor veins, better with a custom made as well? Yeah. I, Although I'd be more likely to encourage someone to consider a, a thermoplastic splint um, in a you know, in a non-pregnancy situation, um, I guess it depends how long it is until the baby is expected. Mm. You know, if, if they're looking at another two months of trying to survive, yep. um, then it's probably worth the investment of a comfortable splint with Velcro straps and all the rest of it. Yep. But if it's just you know, the, the last couple of weeks, then you might just get by with uh, with a cheap off-the-shelf splint or with um, you know, some sort of makeshift thing that just um, helps to manage the symptoms without investing in a more expensive custom-made splint. Absolutely. Um, in terms of advice that you would give these clients with the, with carpal tunnel, are there things that you tell them to avoid again? Um, I know we talked a little bit about the weight-bearing yeah. thing, the gripping. <coughs> Anything else that you can think of that's kind of, that we've kind of covered that? Now? Yeah, so I, we probably have. I, I, I mean. In really severe cases, I would even go to the extent of talking uh, even more generally about nerve health and happiness. To you know, to the extent of talking about uh, about whole body exercise yeah. and you know, en endorphins and serotonin and all those neurotransmitters that, um, that that do literally treat your whole nervous system and um, and desensitise your nervous system when it's irritated. Um, you know, relaxation, meditation, Absolutely. laughter, you know, doing things that make you feel good, um, actually treat your nerves. So, um, yeah. it's, and it's difficult, you know, with people with pain, the more you have pain, the more you think about pain, the more pain yeah. you feel. And you can it's get a into real that, cycle, you know, isn't it? it? Absolutely. And, and I've had back pain and you can become so obsessed and focused by it, it's all you can think about. Yeah. And then suddenly, if you can, you know, get into yeah. exercise, get into things that you enjoy, like you say, that give you those lovely happy hormones. Yeah, that's um, right. It, 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 and it's, it's different for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for some people it's it's being alone and walking along the beach and being in nature and for other people it's going to the pub with friends and, and having those social interactions or watching a funny movie or you know, you know patting the dog, whatever, you know, it's, mm. it's different for each of us. And I think within pregnancy itself, you know, there, there can be for some women so much anxiety so yeah. um, related to the birth, uh, becoming a mother, the, all those changes in roles that happen as you become a parent that Absolutely. adding that to the uh, you know what can be a very significant yeah. pain yeah. Um, again you're, you're dealing with with the chemical side of that too you know the, um, the the neurotransmitters that your brain releases in response to stress um, are exa the exact opposite yeah so you are you're dosing up your nerves with um, the, the, with sensitizing chemicals so mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can counteract that deliberately by some, making some choices to you know, set aside some time every day for exercise and for relaxation and for, um, for things which... So for all the ladies that I nag about getting into a regular habit of relaxation in pregnancy... Go for yet, it. Yet another, yet another good reason.